Ray Bullford. Hello, good morning. My name is Ray Bullford. I am uh, the Blackjack host at The Bike. Um, when I first heard about this, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I am new to the card rooms because I think I have the unique experience of actually working and starting my career in the tribal gaming. And what I've learned and what I've heard our colleagues and people here share today is the uh, unbelievable amount of success stories, success stories that people have worked very hard for over 30 years to maintain in card rooms and, and to supply a product that has been successful and caters to a, a market that doesn't necessarily travel, as, 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 as the lady mentioned, to Las Vegas or tribal gaming um, properties. Now, I hope you consider the success stories that we heard today because it's obviously the hard work and the local communities that have dedicated themselves to making the card rooms and local um, resources maintain and stay in their communities. And I do want to ask, and I hope that you consider, at this time, I wanted to, uh, um, someone mentioned earlier, why now? You know, because uh, with all due respect to the gentleman from Viejas and the other tribal gamers that have been re represented here, um, everyone here is fighting and, and, and looking to maintain their job and, and what we've created and what has maintained for the last 30 years. And as we look at all the tribal gaming properties out in, in, in our area in Southern California, they're all expanding and building huge um, renovations in, in other buildings. And here we're just trying to maintain our own, our own little uh, uh, slice of um, community and the social clubs that we offer. So I ask that you consider that the changes that, that you are considering and, and, the, and, the, and the rule um, that you, you wish to write, I hope that it's, it's not punishing the success of the card rooms in lieu to, to maybe fund or, or hope to divert funds or make people um, go to tribal gaming to pay for their new buildings and their, their, their renovations. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jimmy Miller. Jimmy Miller. All right. Juan Jimenez. Hello, good morning. My name is Juan. And I just come to, actually, I just come to hear what's going on here and hear why the clubs are helping people, families. And I was just thinking, like, we have a thousand of success things, a negative things can impact our communities. And I just want, I just want to hear something positive about it that makes change. If that change go through, I just want to hear something positive come out from there. <laughs> now, when I see all communities will be in a big impact in a negative way, if we lose our jobs, what we gonna do after that? I got family to take care, of. and my kids, my wife, we gotta eat. If we lose our jobs and go out the street, somehow got to provide. So I'm just put this on the table. You guys are already hear what the negative impact will do, and consider what would be good for us if that change go through. Thank you. Thank you. Ana Gonzalez. Hi, 
Ana Gonzalez. Ja uh, Julie Coyne, or Kane. Jack Kim. Jack Kim. Samuel Quintano, or Quinto. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Samuel Quinto, um, casino manager actually from Bay 101 Casino in San Jose. Uh, but I'm not speaking uh, as the casino manager at San Jose's Bay 101. I'm actually here uh, supporting all the uh, local card rooms here in Southern California as a former employee of the Commerce Casino. And uh, from... I mean, we, uh, they've impressed upon you about community, uh, our future, our youth, but I also want to just point out that, you know, I'm just looking at this room here and I see people that, um, including myself, I'm frightened speaking publicly, um, to looking at people coming up here, trying to convey to you what this means and how it's going to impact their lives. I mean, the passion that you see here, and I hope that you take that into account when you uh, make uh, decide on your rulemaking process. And um, I'll speak a little bit more in the uh, Concord meeting over in December with uh, hopefully the other uh, Northern California partners. But like I said, I'm here to support the Southern California casinos down here and uh, their efforts to uh, impress upon you how this is going to impact uh, their lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris Daist. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm uh, Chris Daist. I'm the Recreation and Community Services Director with the City of Bell Gardens. And I'd like to just talk a little bit about the partnership that the City of Bell Gardens Recreation Department has had with the Bicycle Casino. Um, we all know about the revenues that the cities depend on because of the bike, but they are truly a partner with my department in trying to take care of things that help the community. Programs such as that we come up with for childhood obesity, at-risk youth programming, and senior programming. And I know this is that I will call the bike and three things will happen. An owner will pick up the phone, not an employee. The owner will cheerfully greet me and ask, Chris, how are you doing and what do you need? And then we'll have a passionate discussion about what the community needs, what the program's gonna be, and then I will get support for it. And it's not usually the type of support that goes up in a billboard saying it's supported by the bike. It's because the ownership truly has a passion and a care for the community. So I would shudder to think what would happen to the Bell Gardens community without the bike. And uh, I appreciate you guys listening so tentatively and uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Scott Fairfield. Bell Gardens PD, Scott Fairfield. Hint, sign in once. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Christopher Perez. Christopher Perez, Bike Casino. Leonard Mendoza, City of Commerce.
Good afternoon. My name is Leonard Mendoza, Council Member of City of Commerce. And like our mayor spoke earlier, the effect that the City of Commerce is going to have is going to be a 16 million reduction in our revenues. Even though we keep on repeating it and repeating it and it sounds like a lot of money, I'm more concerned about the effects that it's going to have in our community. Again, it's been voiced, it's going to affect our public safety. We happen to live in one of the safest communities in the Southeast. Uh, like our Mayor Pro Tem mentioned, we spend $18 million in our public safety just for the Sheriff's Department. Now, reducing public, uh, public safety sheriffs, what is it going to do? It's going to go ahead and crime is going to increase. Number two, we live in a community that's uh, low to moderate income, hardworking community, and we have about a 17 to a 20% unemployment rate. The decision you're going to make is going to have an effect where our un unemployment rate can ra ra raise to about 25%, 30%. So again, one of our former councilwomen, uh, Leila Leon, mentioned uh, the impact. I call it more of a ripple effect. The decision that you guys are going to make is going to go, it's going to start with the unemployment. From the unemployment, we're going to go to the crime rate. From the crime rate, we're going to go to the cities that have casinos to have to uh, file bankruptcies. People losing their homes, people losing their cars. I remember when back in the day, the American dream was to buy a home, buy a car. Right now, the American dream is to have a job. You know, again, another thing that's going to affect us is with the scholarships. Every casino here, you're hearing the success stories, the money that's invested in, in, in our teens and our kids. I have a personal story. My, my sister would have not been able to go to college if it wasn't for the Commerce Casino. She's going to become a doctor. She's already doing, she finished college, and she knows that she couldn't have done it without the Commerce Casino. The Commerce Casino is not only just a business in commerce, they're our family. And you heard it from them. Every time we need anything, we just run to the casino. They're like mama and papa. What do you need? <laughs> they take care of us. Please take in consideration the ripple effect. Thank you. Thank you. Jack Dijian, City of Montebello. Nital Patel. Nital Patel. Augustine Garcia or Guerrera. I, I cannot read that at all. Okay, um, Lee Vang. Richard Hernandez. Commerce. There might be another one. Tina Del Rio, City of Commerce. Hello, Tina Del Rio, City of Commerce. Um, you know, I, I was going to lean towards the environmental issues that we deal with as a city because I hadn't heard anybody mention anything about the environment. We have so many impacts. Um, 
that this will have if indeed the money's taken away. And we have programs in our city that, that are offset by the casino. We are allowed to, we have a certain, I don't know if anybody knows this, but there's paint out there that we can paint our homes with that allow the homes to breathe, but it keeps the environmental um, smogs and so forth out. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but we do have that in our city and it's available to the people of our community. We are able to get double paned windows, we can get HEPA filters and so forth, because we are a community that is so highly impacted by the two freeways, the rail yard, and Exide. And with all due respect to the gentleman that came up here before from, I think it was uh, one of the Indian gaming uh, casinos, where? Viejas, thank you. Um, we really don't need to be schooled on what the process is here. We know what this process is about. We're here to try to secure what we need to get through our daily lives. We need the subsidies. This casino subsidizes so many things for our city. Uh, we're here to try to fight to keep what, what's ours because every time we turn around, we have to be at another hearing. I think every one of us would rather be home, whether they want to work, if they want to watch a soap opera, or whatever it may be, we'd all rather be somewhere else than have to be here to fight for something that we believe in. It's not that we feel entitled. We appreciate it. We're a proud community, as many of us are here. But we have to continue to fight for what we need because every time we turn around, if it isn't the government saying that, oh yeah, we're gonna get Ginset engines for you guys, the rail yard, and it doesn't come true. Or Eggside pollutes us, and then the state says, oh, we're gonna give you money and fund for the mitigation, and yet we get $100 million, $160 million, but where's the other $600 million gonna come from? We have to continue to fight for our daily lives. We aren't keeping up with the Kardashians. We're keeping up with our daily, day-to-day -day lives. As our council member said, Thank you, we Nina. just want jobs. We want to live. We want to live like anybody else does. But sometimes we have to get subsidized. And if that casino loses that money, a lot of that subsidization is going to go. It's going to go. So I urge you guys, please consider those of us that are coming to you. I believe you're placed in Time's these positions. Up. Thank you so much. To open doors for all of us. Thank you. Desiree Munoz. Keith Sharp. You need to write down what you're trying to say. To Good morning. I'm Keith Sharp, General Counsel for Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on this important issue and for holding this uh, workshop. Um, as you know, my colleague David Freed presented at the October 23rd workshop in Reading, and for the record, I join in his comments. I would like to highlight a couple of legal points for you briefly. One is that the argument made by my tribal counterpart, Mr. Big Knife, and a handful of tribes that the player-dealer position should rotate or must rotate every two hands is simply wrong. None of the relevant cases, which I assume you've looked at, require that the player-dealer position rotate to a different participant every two hands. There's no statement in any judicial decision or any law that that must be the case. The only connection of two hands to this matter is the fact that the practice in the games at issue in the relevant cases was to offer the player-dealer position every two hands in clockwise order to each player position. Importantly, the reasoning of the Oliver decision did not differ from that of the courts that came before it. Rather, the court and Oliver determined that the rules in the game at issue allowed for the possibility that one person or entity could hold the player-dealer position for a long time, thereby potentially making the game a bank game. Oliver does not say again that the player-dealer position must rotate every two hands. I'd also direct your attention to the legislative history of AB 1416, adopted after Oliver to codify the usage of player-dealers. The amendments, the Senate amendments of July 5th, 2000 struck down 
language that would have required that no player could hold the player dealer position for more than two consecutive hands. I submit that the Bureau cannot now substitute its own judgment for that of the legislature by setting a legal standard of rotation every two hands. So you're left to determine what's a long time. It's somewhere between zero and infinity. And I'd, <laughs> I'd suggest that it's closer to infinity than it is to zero. So we've had discussions with you uh, in the past. 30 uh, seconds, Mr. Shark. We had come to uh, an arrangement that would have hurt the industry and our communities, but was going to finally resolve the matter for a single standard. I'd urge you to look at many standards. One size does not fit all in our industry. It could be by uh, time, it could be by game, it could be by all kinds of things. Please be open to that. Finally, your regulators, you're in the business of regulating, please do not over-regulate. Your charge is to determine that a bank game does not exist. So I would tell you, do the minimum that the law requires, and that'll satisfy your regulatory burden and not unduly harm the communities that you see here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Good news, two things. Uh, Christopher Perez has been located <laughs> and is ready to present his comments. And um, we will be able to extend our um, time here for an, another bit of time, so an hour. So uh, Christopher Perez, at long last. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Christopher Perez. I'm a second year student at UCLA and a Bicycle Casino Foundation scholarship recipient. I will not take much of your time as residents from my community have expressed their concerns about the negative impacts these regulations would have in my community. I am speaking on behalf of the hundreds of college students from my community who benefit and rely on the generosity of casinos like the Bicycle Casino in Bell Gardens. I would please like you all to reconsider these high stake regulations as they would not only affect low income students like myself, but future generations of scholarship recipients from my community who heavily rely on these scholarships. Tuition is increasing year by year and financial aid only covers a fraction of those costs. Please don't deprive me, my fellow scholarship recipients and future generations of scholarship recipients of our education. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah Santana. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I also have difficulty speaking in public sometimes because it's, I get nervous, but here's my story. Um, I've only been in commerce, living there for a little over a year. Um, I am not even from Los Angeles. Um, I have lived out of the United, outside of the United States for, since I was 12. Um, I am a internationally trained doctor. Um, and because of life circumstances, I am now living in the US um, with my two daughters. Um, I just found out that this hearing was to occur today. Um, and I wanted to voice how strongly I feel about this, even though I am not brought up in commerce. Um, the Parks and Recreation Department is fabulous. Their employees are friendly. You can tell when somebody just goes to a job and when somebody really cares about their job. Um, the Parks and Recreation Department allow me to have a space for my daughters so I can prepare for my board's examination. Otherwise, I don't know how I would have pulled it off this summer. Having two kids, nine and five, um, all day in the house, I can't afford to keep them in uh, you know, summer camps. They're very expensive. And although I'm a physician, I, I don't have a job because I don't have a license in the US yet, but I will. And this is thanks to the Parks and Recreation Department that have such fabulous programs. They allow my daughters to go to museums. They allow them to go to amusement parks that I can't afford right now. Um, they allow them a space so I can put in my eight to 10 hours of study time that I need to be able to excel and to be competitive at this exam. 
that is very competitive. You have people from all over the world trying to be a U.S. physician that are internationally trained. And we have to compete against U.S. students that have an upper hand. Um, I am a Latina. I'm very proud. I am a California native. And I love that this transition has been very smooth for my daughters who have never lived in the United States up until a year and a half ago and that they're in commerce now. I told my daughter that the possibility of this being taken away, and she's, been, she's asked me every day, Mom, do you know what's going to happen? Is the park going to still be there? Will we be able to go to the library? And I say, sweetie, physically, the space will be here. We'll see what happens. So I really hope, I really hope that these programs could be for me, for my daughters, for future generations, because just little ripple effect, just this little thing like having a parks and recreation program is not just entertainment for a little kid. It has a, an effect on adults, on the mothers, working mothers, okay? So please consider this. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Susana Cisneros, and I'm standing here before you with my heart in my hand. Being a mom is not easy, but being a mom of a child with special needs is often time, 10 times harder. When my son, Jose Angel, was born, my life changed instantly. It changed who I am, and what my place in this world is. He made me stronger, kinder, more patient, and he helped me value all things in life, big and small. When he was born, I was scared. Scared because I didn't know what to do. My son has, was diagnosed with Down syndrome at birth but Down syndrome does not define who he is. Regardless of his condition, he is a child. A child with needs, a child that deserves the same opportunity as any other child in the community. The City of Commerce has embraced my child, has given him the opportunity to participate in parks and recreation programs, like preschool, fully included, in a typical developing class, graduated. That might not seem like a big thing or deal to you, but for a little boy who is five that has to work 10 times harder, it's a big deal. Looking at my son walk up there and receiving that diploma with so much confidence and self-esteem is so worth it. The City of Commerce has created an inclusive playground. They're also educating the staff from Park and Recreation, offering them programs that will help them understand on how our children. I'm asking you to please consider, in behalf of all the family and all the children with special needs, please. We need your support. Our kids matter. Our kids' life is worth it. It takes a village to raise a special child. And without the City of Commerce and the help from the Commerce Casino, I would not know what to do. I'm asking to please consider, in behalf of all the families that have kids with special needs, what would our children do if we didn't have parks and recreation programs that are supporting our kids and adapting and embracing them and loving them unconditionally. Thank you so much for your Thank time. you. Noel Tapia. Good afternoon, everybody. I have the honor to serve as legal counsel to three of these communities, the City of Hawaiian Gardens, the City of Bell Gardens, and the City of Commerce. And as you can see by, ten, by today's turnout, the card clubs that operate in our cities are esteemed, vital members of our communities. 
This place that they hold wasn't given to them. It was earned. It was earned because the card clubs provide vital jobs to hardworking members of our communities so that they are able to work towards and provide the American dream for their families. This place is earned because they provide vital resources to our cities who then are able to provide resources, services to seniors, to kids that rely on these services. There was a mention of, of, of Olympians that have been trained in our cities. I've mentioned this before to this, to this body that in the city of Commerce, we have an aquatic center that rivals an aquatic center anywhere in Southern California. And there are kids that are being trained there that are competing against some of the most privileged kids in Southern California. And these kids are representing a working class community right in the center of Los Angeles. I have the honor to sit and cover city council meetings where I get to witness kids programs that come up and ask for certain subsidies, support for their programs, where kids are competing against the brightest and the best, and they come to ask for support so that they can travel to distant places, Sacramento, to other states to compete. Then I get the honor to see them come back and show us their medals and tell us how well they did in these national competitions. These card clubs are the economic engines that drive many of these cities. For example, in the city of Hawaiian Gardens, the city is one square mile. We don't have the opportunity of space to create another alternative that creates these types of jobs for the members of this community. We've heard us discuss the continuous and systematic standard that you all will, are in charge to um, create and adopt regulations. From where I sit, I understand that these regulations are going to be adopted. So the question is, what form are they going to take? And I urge you, on behalf of the, the communities that I represent and all the people in this room, to consider the impacts when you are preparing and adopting these regulations and when you consider uh, what continuous and systematic means. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Joy Harn. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to hear from everybody who has an interest in what, what you're going to be working on in the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, out of respect for everybody else behind me who may want to speak, I will try and be incredibly brief. I want to um, start off by acknowledging the comments that David Freed made at the prior meeting in Reading and the comments that were made by Keith Sharp earlier today, and I will simply say that I join in those comments. <clears throat> uh, there can be no doubt that player-dealer games are legal. That has been the case in the state for years, and there is no reason there has been no change in the law to change the status of those games. To the extent that a statute requires any interpretation by regulation, the regulations must have the least negative impact. We have had the opportunity to engage in numerous meetings with the Bureau in prior years and had the opportunity at that time to present that information. Nothing has changed. As was explained at that time, there is nothing in the law that would suggest or require a rotation on any specific basis, and certainly not every two hands. The fact that that practice may have been adopted by some to offer the rotation every two hands does not translate into a legal requirement, and it should not be interpreted that way as you move through this process. Um, I will leave you with, uh, again, relying on the previous comments that or meetings and communications that we've had. Encourage you to engage the industry if you ha as you have in the past um, so that we might formulate something going forward that is workable for the industry, workable for the Bureau, and does the least harm to everybody in this room and their communities. <clears throat> Thank you. Rudy Haragi. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Rudy Haragi. 
I'm an employee for Commerce Casino. I do not live in the city of Commerce, but I am so humble and proud to say that um, Commerce did hire me, and I don't have an education. I had a little bit of some college, but never got a degree. I did went to high school, I graduated, and I'm proudly and humble to say that I am part of a Commerce Casino management team. Um, the responsibility that I have in my position, it is so great and I am proud of myself to have that position because I don't have an education. I grew up in Watts. I was an active gang member for eight years. But working in the casino industry separated me away from other gang violence. Now I'm happy to say that I have a clean record I've never been convicted of anything. I'm scared that if you take this away from us, my kids may go and follow the path that I had, and they may not be strong enough to say no to things that I said no to. Please, I welcome you to follow our path with your kids. If you're willing to do that, I'm it's amazing, but please don't take that away from us. I don't want my kids to grow up in the, in the hood. I don't want my kids to grow up in the ghetto. I want them to have an education. I want them to be better than me. In order for me to succeed doing that, I need my job. P put yourself in my shoes. Will you want your kids to grow up in the hood, in the ghetto? There's gangs, drugs, violence. 30 seconds. Come on, I mean, it's hard as it is. Don't take this little much that we have away from us. Please reconsider your decision. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Madalena Moraka. My name is Madalena Moraika, and um, I'm 70 years old and working for the Bicycle Casino. I've been there for 26 years working as a cage cashier. I do love my job and my colleagues and consider the Bicycle Casino my second home. If changes are going to be made, restriction on popular tables imposed, everybody will suffer. So please take that in consideration, and I do thank you very much, and I hope I can work quite a few more years for the Bicycle Casino, <laughs> that I do love so much. Thank you. Thank you. Cassandra Wilner. Hello. My name is Cassandra Wilner, and I am a banker at the Bicycle Casino. I didn't start at the Bicycle Casino, but I started at 580 Casino, uh, and I have the honor and pleasure to work for a great company called Night Adventures. When I first started, I didn't know what I was getting myself into <laughs> because it's a lot of math and I didn't think I could take it. When I walked into the interview and walked into a great company, they, the first thing I was taught was three uh, letters that spell top. Teamwork, ownership, and poise. Teamwork. And I apply that to here now because you see all these people right behind me, all these people that are uh, food service, janitors, all that stuff. We have teamwork. We go to work every day. We want to put food on our tables for our kids. We want better for our kids. We want better for our families. Ownership, we take ownership 
and whatever we do, we go to work every day. And poise, we walk very hard into, we walk into work with poise and respect for our jobs. I also learned integrity, integrity for who I work for, what I do. And if a job can teach you that, I don't want anybody in my company, any other casino, to feel like they have to be taken away of whatever they feel they are working hard for, whether it's school, family, friends, whatever. I, I go to a company with, like I said, integrity, and I know that it's doing the right thing. So I hope that with you guys being the voice for us and helping us, as I like, helping us. Um, 30 seconds. Okay, <laughs> uh, helping us. Um, you guys can be the voice and show your guys' integrity to us and our hardworking families. Thank you. Thank you. Jade Pock. Howard Strum. My name is Jimmy Gutierrez. I'm not Howard Strum, but I look like him. <laughs> I'm the attorney for the California Cities for Self-Reliance, which is a joint powers authority that comprised of the seven cities in Los Angeles County that have car clubs. I'll, I'll refer to ourselves as the California Cities JPA. We're here because we're very concerned about what you propose to do. And I will state that this workshop is terrifying. It's terrifying for everyone that's in this room because you're seeking to affect their economic well-being. I have, in this context, one statement and two questions. My statement is this. The cities, not just the car clubs, have a vested interest in continuing the games as they've been played without any change. And I say that because it is clear that you are here under the auspices of regulations which have not been shown, but you're having a workshop on regulations, and we know where it's going. There are going to be regulations that are going to restrict the way that car clubs have been played for decades, and those restrictions will reduce the income to the cities and the income and the funds that everybody in this room has come to rely on. And the reason that the cities have a vested interest is because many cities had car club ordinances adopted by the people of their cities under the California Constitution. Those clubs have existed for decades. Those games have been approved well before the Gambling Control Commission existed, well before the Gambling, Gaming Control Act was adopted and they have the right to continue because your bureau and the Gaming Commission has approved each and every one of the games that are there. And so the question that you need to answer to everybody in this room is this. What is broken? What is illegal with the way the games have been played for decades? Seconds. The other question you need to answer is this. Under what authority do you propose to proceed? The Bureau has no authority to adopt regulations. That authority is rested in the Commission. And furthermore, there are three legislative limitations on the authority of the Bureau and the Commission to adopt regulations. They're, they're the ones that say that the Commission cannot make statewide changes in games or how they're played without a finding that there is some illegality of local ordinance, U.S. statute, or California statute. And we are governed by the California statutes. Look at Penal Code Section 330.11, which clearly says that ro player rotation is permitted. And I remind you that the cases under the, by the courts in California have stated that that determination is a legal determination for the courts only, not for any administrative authority, not for this bureau. Mr. So when you, when you consider whatever regulations you're going to adopt, Please 
consider these questions and perhaps you will decide not to proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Did Mr. Strum wish to speak? <laughs> All right. Ryan Linky, Ryan Link. God bless you. Salud. <laughs> Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Ryan Link. I'm currently employed at the Players Casino in Ventura, California as a Cal Games dealer. As I'm sure many of you are aware, the cost of living in California is extremely high, especially in coastal communities. I think it's safe to say that if I was not employed at Players Casino, I would not be able to afford where I live. Working at Players Casino has afforded many of us a quality of life that we would otherwise not have. When I first started working at Players Casino, we were on the heels of one of the worst recessions our country has ever seen. Many people were out of work and jobs were hard to come by. Thinking back on the time, I now realize how many opportunities this job has opened up for so many. A lot of people moved from far away. They brought their families and started a new life in Ventura. What you may not know about people in the casino industry is there are a lot of families that work in the casino, meaning that both husband and wife work there. Altering the way that cow games are played or offered would immediately disrupt people's livelihoods. Employees have kids, they have mortgages, they have health plans offered by the casino. If changes are made to the way we are allowed to operate, then hours might have to be cut. If we don't have full-time hours, will we still qualify for health insurance? Will people still be able to pay their mortgages? What about all the expenses that come along with having kids? I recently got married, and as we start to pursue the dream of home ownership, changing the rules in which players can operate in a manner which would drastically affect my income would immediately alter our ability to pursue home ownership. As extreme as that sounds, it is 100% true. I know there are many employees across the straight state in my shoes, or the shoes of my fellow employees that have, I've described above. I urge you to consider us when deciding on how to move forward. On a macro level, California cardrooms generate a lot of federal, state, and local taxes. 30 seconds. By changing the way they are allowed to operate, you would in turn be impacting the individual municipalities and the services that are afforded by these taxes. This would have a domino effect on a city budget through the state. Does it really make sense to hinder the operations of card room if the end result will mean a decrease in city services? Thank you. Thank you. Carmela Mahar. The last thing I am is a public speaker, but I am a Recreation and Parks Commissioner. Folks, please. From Hawaiian Gardens. I'll say that again. I'm a Recreation and Parks Commissioner and a Public Housing Director. Uh, 17 years ago, I went at a hearing to make our casino come to our city. And I was very glad I made that decision to fight for that casino because it has brought a lot of happiness to my city. Um, we all enjoy all the wonderful things we can do because of the casino. They have helped us tremendously. The city parks allow our children to play and have outings with their family, and many functions are performed at the parks. If this is taken away from us, where will the children go with their families? And I enjoy helping to make the improvements of the park, so I wouldn't be a commissioner anymore. And I'm on a limited income, and I'm gonna speak now for the seniors, because we have many seniors in our city, and they depend on coming every day 
and they have something to do, somewhere to go. The transportation comes and gets them in their walkers, in their wheelchairs. What would they do if they didn't have this? Sit in a house and just fade away. We were once, like you, young, ambitious, and growing up. I'm 84. I still go to the casino. I mean, not the casino, but <laughs> I'd like to go to the casino every day. I just can't afford it. <laughs> I'd like to go there, but I can't afford to go to the casino. It's gotten very costly to spend a day at the casino. But I do go to the senior center every day, and I really hope and pray that you people just let us stay the way we are. 30 seconds. Because everybody needs to have what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Rodriguez. Good afternoon. I'm Anna Rodriguez, and I'm a proud resident of Hawaiian Gardens. And the reason why I say I'm a proud resident is because the revenues that the city gets from the casino, uh, yes, it does fund a lot of programs, our senior programs, our youth programs, and even our beautification programs. If you see how Hawaiian Gardens has changed in the last 20 years, you'd be amazed. You know, like the tribal uh, communities, we were a poor community, low income, we had a lot of gangs. Uh, you know, but the revenues that we receive from the community, uh, from the uh, casino, or the card rooms, I'm sorry, has greatly impacted our city. Um, and because of that, we're able to uh, support and pass measures like Measure H for the homeless. You know, if that was the case, if we couldn't, if we had, if our fundings were cut from, you know, these revenues, then we wouldn't be able to support uh, homelessness and other organizations, nonprofits. You know, when you guys are, you know, reviewing your regula regulations and rules, um, just remember this, regulations and rules can evolve to meet and help, you know, provide and be fair to all the communities, not just here in Southern California, but also Northern California, where there's a lot of non-tribal card rooms. So, you know, like everybody else, I really urge you to take all of this into consideration, not just the community impact, but also statewide impact in all the measures that, you know, residents like Hawaiian Gardens, Commerce, and Bell, uh, Bell Gardens are able to support. Um, and I really thank you all for your time and everybody else. So thank you. Thank you. Maria Arana. Hi, my name is Maria Arana. I'm resident of Bell Gardens. I am neighborhood me member. And I'm pledging you because we need the resources to our kids so they have where to play sports, so they have where to stay out of crime. I am my mom of five kids, five boys. I, I, my husband and I took them always to the sports, to every sports, the, the um, parks and recreation provides for them. So I, I, we, we keep them busy so they, they not get involved in gangs, in crime. So all of them uh, are now big, or enough big, they grow up. We raise them in Bell Gardens. Um, Bel, the casino gave them a scholarship. Three of them are already attending UC Santa Barbara. The oldest one is, this year is now um, his last year. Um, so I want you to, to um, do, not, do not take out our, our um, resources for our kids. Please uh, keep in mind, so don't take away our bright futures to our kids. Thank you. Thank you.
Alejandra Ruiz. Ruiz. Hi, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Alejandra, and I am neighborhood member, neighborhood watch. We know, we, we know what resources to our city to have more staff in the police department. I cannot see a policeman in every corner. We do not want crime to increase. We need resources for prevention of crime. Maybe, do you know, do you not know what it is like with poor resources like us? Because Bicycle Casino, casino give us a lot of place thing. Think about the most need to help us. Uh, I'm sorry for my English. Um, I think you guys, you need um, enough money and maybe your kids, they don't have to worry about the gangs or the crime. Please remind, um, we are poor, poor people and we need more police policemen in our city. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Moralia Ribolo. You might have a chance. Okay, so uh, Hendren Desay. Hi, my name is Hanra Dezay, and I'm a dealer at Players Casino. I'd just like to tell you what the player dealer position means to me and what it should mean to you. As a dealer throughout the night, I repeatedly turn the player dealer button over and over, and I offer it to each and every single customer. And I do this to provide a service to my customers, and that's all it is. It's a, simply a tool for me to provide service to my customers. So please don't let it be used as a weapon to hurt the people that have to use it. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Vega. Ben Vega. Uh, Kelly Bershinsky. Good afternoon. My name is Kelly Bershinsky. I work at Players Casino in Ventura, California. Um, I've loved being here this morning and hearing the stories of the local communities and what the card rooms have done in those communities. The good work that the card, uh, the card clubs have done in those communities. And I can't imagine there's anybody here that would suggest that we'd like to see less good done in those communities. And that's done as a result of the revenue that we produce. So while the gentleman made the point that this is about determining the rules about player-dealer rotation, all that sort of thing, yes, that's absolutely true. But for us, it's about 
more than that. It's about the, the ability to do business in a way that makes sense for our business and for our customers. If that is negatively impacted, it's about more than just that rule. It's about money. It's absolutely about revenue. It's absolutely about jobs. And it's absolutely about our ability to provide and care for our families. What would it mean for me? I don't know. Could be cut hours. Would I still have a job? Would I be forced to relocate, maybe out of state? I don't know the answer to those questions at this time. But they all seem like possibilities based on whatever rule comes about. Um, but that's not a big deal. One guy might have to leave the state, you know? Well, multiply that by everybody in this room and the thousands of other people that aren't here today that are in the card room industry that do similar work. That could have an impact on all of us. So what I would say is I look forward to a time when we stand in a conference room discussing how we can seconds. enhance our business activities rather than discussing measures that limit them. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah Santorina. Irma Del Rio. Buenas tardes. Lo voy a hablar en español. Me da pena este, pues no hablar inglés, pero en aquellos tiempos cuando yo tuve mis niños y que estaban creciendo, pues no me fui a la escuela por estar cerca de mis niños. Ahora ellos este, pues son unos muchachos que han estudiado y tienen buenos trabajos. Gracias a Dios. En en aquellos tiempos, hace como 30 años, nuestra ciudad estaba muy mal. Nuestros jóvenes estaban en pandillas, nuestros jóvenes estaban en drogas y nuestros jóvenes estaban en la calle. ¿Por qué? Porque no había programas, no, en, no había dónde entretenerse a nuestros jóvenes y era una tristeza que nuestros jóvenes estaban en las cárceles y todavía. Pero... Desde que el casino provee el dinero a nuestra ciudad, es como un nuevo amanecer para nuestra ciudad y nuestra comunidad, porque todo ha cambiado. Ya nuestros jóvenes están estudiando más, nuestros jóvenes están en más grados más altos de las escuelas y es un gusto y es un placer que el casino esté proviendo ese dinero para, pues, para nuestra comunidad y que pues yo tengo 48 años aquí en la ciudad de Hawaiian Gardens y he visto el cambio desde que el casino provee ese dinero. Yo les pido que no quiten los programas para nuestros niños, nuestros adultos y nuestros jóvenes. Muchas gracias. Thank you. All right, so that was the end of the uh, list of folks who had signed up to present comments or speak at today's hearing. We have a few more minutes. Um, if anyone else, what? Okay, come on in. And if you could please state and spell your name because we don't have that on the list. Not a problem. Great. I, my name is Nicholas Razo, um, and I come here representing the city of Bell Gardens. I'm their administrative services manager. I'm also um, a former Army active duty and current Army reservist. And the reason I mention that is because about 15 years ago, I was just ending my service with the active duty Army, and I was looking to get into local government. And um, luckily, because of the bike and the city of Bell Gardens partnership, the city just so happened to be looking for an intern 
with military background. And there I was at the right place at the right time. So I owe the bike and the city um, my career. And so I am deadly, um, I owe them very much. So I'm sorry I get a little choked up because it brought me back to 15 years ago when I was young, snot-nosed kid, and I didn't know where I was going. And so fast forward 15 years, I've realized a couple things. One, I'm no longer young, um, no longer snot-nosed, but I have had the opportunity in the different roles that I've been able to be a part of within the city over the past 15 years is realize the impact that that partnership provides for the city and for the residents and the services of the city of Bell Gardens. Um, with it being 44% of our budget, I see the positive impact and the things that we're able to do as a city and for the residents uh, because of that partnership. Um, and because of that tax revenue, um, when we had a sluggish economy and we were going through a recession just a few years ago, the city was able to, through that funding and the tax revenue with the casino, um, maintain its services um, and maintain the workforce, 100% of the workforce, which was a struggle, but because of that partnership, it was um, able to be accomplished. Now, in my role um, in overseeing HR, um, I also see that a major loss in that revenue and what its impact could be um, on the workforce, most likely with layoffs, and how that can domino and how services could be affected in a negative way um, due to that loss in revenue. So again, in closing, I just urge you to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I didn't sign up because I didn't think I was going to talk, but I felt I should say something. First of all, my name is Haig Papayan. For all of you who don't know me, I'm with the Commerce Casino. I, I want to thank this gentleman that just came up for being a vet. Thank you, all vets. All right, every one of you guys, thank you for your duty. I got an HR director that was Army Air Airborne. But I have a few questions. I would like to know what has changed. For the past 20 years, we were allowed to play these games. We've had attorney generals that allowed us to play these games. And I know you're not going to answer this now. I don't think you can. But think about it. What's changed? What have we done? I heard comments earlier about tribal casinos. God bless them. I think they should keep doing what they're doing. The state of California, the people voted to give them these exclusive games, and they should have them. Our games are different. Now, if there's issues with the way we do rotation, you all know we work something out, but some rogue card room in Turlock, and I'm being really nice for those of you who know me, um, ruined this thing. And why can't we get back to that position and get this done? Why do we have to fight? And the, I will leave this with one. You heard a lot of stories of people and their children. You know what we do in the City of Commerce, Hawaiian Gardens, a bike, Bicycle, Bell Gardens. At the end of the day, you're going to listen to these people, and you're going to go, okay, well, whatever. But as, I think it was Leonard. You called me Papa? I don't believe that one. <laughs> Serious. Huh? That's why he left early. Yeah, see, you better leave early. I'll take care of him. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. I hear this. It's in my head. I take care of these people. It is my duty. I have 2,500 employees, 13,000 residents, 40-plus shareholders. That's my job. And standing up here today, I like to think that I represent all these people for their jobs. So on that note, you don't have to put up that 30-second sign. Thank you very much. Have a, have a good evening. Oh, man. Anyone else? Good afternoon, my name is George Montes. I'm a resident of the City of Commerce, and I am also a veteran. I retired after 22 years of service. Thank you for your service. I've seen, 
I've seen governments crumble. I've helped restore different uh, cities and nations back to where they needed to be within their governments. One of the things that was most difficult while I was in the, in the, in the service was um, tr going from place to place to place. Here in the seat of commerce, I, and I decided to retire there because I felt the community there. I felt that my kids were able to participate without being judged. My son went to six different schools by the time he was in, in the sixth grade. So just, just imagine that, how, how that can impact somebody. But here he, he was accepted. Not only did they help form him in his forming years, this year he was selected as a young man of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he's a young man of the year for the, here for the city of commerce and he would like to be here today but as he's fulfilling his scholarship that he received, he, right now he's at school in Cal State Fullerton. I also was a uh, recipient from the City of Commerce Scholarship, and I was able to get my master's degrees from the USC. So I tell my son, here we have the true story, and then here we have a fictional book. You know, what's going to happen in our fictional book, or what's going to happen in our true story? Our true story is what we make of it, what we tell, what happens in our daily lives. And sometimes that fictional story, we don't want to open it up but you are gonna help us write what's gonna happen in that fictional story and hopefully they become a true story for us and help us move on, go past this situation. Because right now, one of the most difficult situations I was ever in was when I had to um, make a decision on my mom and life support. That was a very dis hard, difficult decision to make, but it had to be done. Just like you today have to make a decision or report back a decision. So some of these people to my left and to my right might be on that life support. Some of them might be in the ICU waiting for that decision to come back. So just think about that before you flip that switch and you make a decision for everybody here that's gonna be impacted. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is on? Am I on? You are Hello? on. Okay. Is that to speak loud? So thank you everyone for coming. And just a couple of things. I think the first thing, just, um, just so you know, yes, we are the Bureau of Gambling Control within the Department of Justice. So the Gambling Control Commission is a separate commission. And um, I think the commission probably want me to make that distinction because yeah, <laughs> they're not the ones sitting up here right now. So I know that gets confusing. Also, um, we've been asked a, a many times here to reconsider what we're doing. And just to go back to the process, so there, we have not drafted regulations yet. We are trying to get um, information from everyone, so when we start drafting, we have some input and we can consider it. Um, when we start doing regs, <laughs> when we start doing regulations, there are things we're gonna have to justify, like our authority, and to um, reconcile it with the law to make sure we're doing things correctly, and also consider the impact. So, um, and that's a, that's a full um, process that involves public comment and a lot of participation as well. So just to clarify, we're in those very early stages. That's where we're going around the state trying to talk to people um, and just get some input. So in terms of the impact too, I, I can't comment on that because we don't know what those regulations are going to look like yet. So just in terms of process, I just wanted to clarify that because I know we've been asked to reconsider. We just have not drafted anything yet. Um, I, I do understand, though, the fear, and what's nice, I think, is that we work with the card rooms a lot in the third-party industry, um, but we don't get a chance, probably, to hear what um, all the good they're doing in the community and to hear from you, so I think, aside from just the regulation process, um, having the opportunity to hear from you and, and to hear it, what the card rooms and the third parties are doing in the communities, um, is, um, it was just a good experience, so. Um, with that, I don't know if, my, if the assistant directors have any comments. I hate to put them on the spot, but I always do. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, is there any closing things? I think yes. probably. Yes, we do. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. So it is approximately 12:41, uh, and the, uh, this uh, regulations hearing or workshop is now closed for comment for public comment at this um, 
uh, hearing. The Bureau greatly appreciates the time you committed to today's discussion. We will analyze all information discussed today and will move forward with this process when appropriate. This concludes the workshop discussion for uh, regarding the rotation of the player dealer position. Thank you all for attending and for presenting your comments. But before you all leave, um, you can still uh, submit written comments to the Bureau. And let me give you the, the address in case you need it. It is P.O. Box 168024, Sacramento, California, 95816. You can also email that information to the Bureau of Gambling Control, BGC underscore um, regulations, I think that's what it is. It's also on your participation guidelines. The next workshop is scheduled for Tuesday, December the 11th, 2018 at 1 o'clock at the Contra Costa Event Park located at 1201 West 10th Street, Building 2 in Antioch, California. Thank you so much for your attendance.